Hello everybody, my name is Michael, and in today's video what we're going to be doing is I'm going to be turning a dollar store birdhouse into a tabletop quality, hopefully, uh, miniature terrain house that we can use for any RPG, tabletop wargaming, anything like that, with just a little bit of work and some time, with some DIY skills. So hopefully we can make it look like it's a nice, awesome terrain piece to use in our tabletop gaming. So if that sounds interesting to you, let's get into that video. Okay, so I've just dry fitted our birdhouse here just to see what it looks like and see what we can use as a template for building our house. And I can see here that it's quite tall and I'm just going to grab a miniature here so I can see what the size comparison is. And you can see I've got quite a lot of room to play around with. So I think I'm going to turn this into a nice little two-story house. So that'll be something a little bit extra to do here and we can play around with that height a little bit. So let's get into starting this build. Okay, so what I've done is I've just spent a little bit of time marking out some of the places where I'm going to have certain things like uh, windows and doors as well as I've drawn a line across the, sort of roughly the center where I want to have that second story so I know where I've got to work with here so like I said before I was dry fitting everything together so I could do this here because I didn't want to try and cut holes and stuff in it uh, and try and make windows and doors and things with it all built together it was just going to make it way too difficult whereas I can work in each individual piece here and you can see here I've just got myself a, a knife and I'm just coming in and slowly carving in the places like the windows uh, so that I've marked out and you see where I'm scrapping it because I wanted to have it uh, sort of embedded in the wood I want to actually use the out structure of the actual birdhouse itself as the frame I didn't want to I'm not building with foam or anything like that I want to keep this nice and simple and try and make it so anyone can do this sort of thing and idea to give you all some <laughs> uh, inspiration when you're uh, maybe at a dollar store and you see one of these things so while cutting these windows out I got a little bit of flashing and stuff like that where it didn't quite cut up properly and you can see where I sort of had to push it through and break it just a little bit so all I'm doing is coming in with a nice little file here and just sanding those little bits in there and it's a good idea too that I'm going to be going in and sanding in around the edges of all these little windows so I've got a nice even and smooth surface to work with all around it's going to make it nicer for gluing and stuff like that okay so now what I'm doing is I'm grabbing some matchsticks and I'm going to be using these for a little window frame so we've got that nice big hole in our birdhouse of course for the birds to go in and I want to turn that into a nice big sort of like feature window on the front of the house and see with the matchsticks here I've, what I've done is I've gone around and measured them up cut them to size so they sort of jam in there a little bit so it gives me a little bit of resistance to work with there it makes it a little bit easier on me to uh, glue them there without it worrying about falling down or accidentally warping anything like that but it is a lot more of a struggle and a process to get this right sometimes you have to go through a few matchsticks but don't worry I've got plenty of them and any sort of DIY crafter here probably has heaps of matchsticks to work with so spend that little bit of time make sure you can little jam it in there a little bit more so you've got a little bit more strength in the actual piece itself Okay, so now I've got those window frames all nice and glued in, and they're nice and stiff. I can now move on to the next part of the, um, building this house, and what I'm going to do is use some wood glue again. I'm going to be using a lot of wood glue in this project, and I'm going to be using these here, which are little strips of balsa wood that are about the same size as the matchsticks. Now, you could totally substitute this out for matchsticks if you wanted to, but I managed to come across some balsa wood, which I uh, don't very often come across, and especially these little ones that are the same size as matchsticks, I thought it'd be great to work with in a crafting project. I haven't used uh, balsa wood on a crafting project before, so I thought this would be a fun opportunity to use this as well as that. I'm also going to be using it into a bunch of other places. I've got a whole bunch of different size bits of balsa wood. Okay, so while making these frames, I had a nice big uh, piece of balsa wood that was nice and flat so I could cut out a circle around it. And as you can see, as I was making the frame, it broke as I was doing this. I used a compass to measure it out and everything, and I was going around carefully cutting it out, but I ended up by cutting a little bit too hard, snapping it into three pieces as it was super, super fragile, but nothing to worry about here. Yeah, we've got a glue. I found all the pieces and it all lines up perfectly. So it's going to be fine, especially once the glue dries, you're barely going to be able to tell that it was broken in the first place, but just a little bit of um, video footage I thought I should put in there so you can see not everything goes flawlessly in these videos or sometimes you've got to try uh, make up where you can. And especially since we're crafting, things like this are bound to happen. 
Okay, so with those window frames done, I also put on a door on the front here. And as you can see, I've glued the whole piece together and I've waited for a whole day so we've got a nice strength for this entire birdhouse put together. The only thing I didn't do was I didn't put the roof on and that was... Uh, as you can see here, I've got a little Dremel with a saw blade on it, and I'm going to be cutting down the sides here where these areas overlap because I want to uh, try and make it nice and even so I've got a little bit more uh, space here to do what I'm trying to do with the edges of the house. And I brought a little saw blade for my Dremel because I got sick of trying to spend hours and hours cutting those little bits with a knife. Okay, so now we've got those edges nicely shaved off. We've got a nice even surface to work with here. I can now move on to the step that I was trying to do before. I realized there was such a big gap between those areas. And that is to grab some balsa wood, our wood glue again. And I'm just going to be running it down the side here where I'm going to be placing these little bits of balsa wood that uh, came in this little pack. I brought a pack that came with a bunch of random sizes of balsa wood that was where I got the little matchsticks ones, the nice big flat ones that I used to make uh, the circle piece for our window frame there, as well as these little ones here which are great little sideboards. They're going to be great for um, sectioning off the areas of our uh, house here I'm going to put them on each edge there as well as that too I'm also going to be doing it for across the middles to separate out the first and the second story of our house so it's just a matter of going around placing them in and getting them so they're going to sit nicely and flush together Okay, so now we have all that nice wooden trim around the e edges of our house as well as separating out that first and second story. I've done two things here. What I've done is I've put some uh, black paper here in behind it, which is actually not really black paper, but it would have been easier if I used black paper. I just grabbed some uh, basic uh, cardstock and I painted it black and stuck it behind these windows so you can't see into the house as well as that I've also glued the roof onto the house as well and then now as you can see what I'm doing here is I'm grabbing this to be making that nice sort of waddle and daub look to the house and this here is pre-mixed tile grout it comes in this nice little squeezy tube so I can sit here and uh, nicely squeeze it into those areas and then I can spread it out once I've got it this this is something I've never worked with before, but I've seen a lot of uh, crafting tutorials on YouTube where they do this uh, to make it give a realistic sort of waddle and daub look. And uh, I thought it'd be fun to try out. And if you don't have some of this, you could probably use some like uh, maybe Plaster of Paris or like uh, some even just texture paste that you use for your bases here. This is, that's what originally I was going to do, but I went down to the local hardware store and I seen that they had some of this pre-mixed tile grout. So I grabbed that. I seen people use it online. I thought I really want to give that a try. So that's what I did here. And it's just a matter of going around and filling in the areas in between our nice wooden edging and being very careful not to accidentally hit those places that we don't want it to on that wood edging but wipe it off as fast as you can so it doesn't dry like that so we can have as little errors as we can possibly have in this step so just be nice and careful switch to smaller tools if you need to to get it nice into those gaps uh, like you can see me doing here trying to save space because like i want to use the wood here i'm going to paint up the wood i don't want to be uh doing anything crazy i want to keep this nice and simple as possible and use the materials we have available so just spending the time here to go around and do this to each of those panels okay so now we've got each one of those panels done we can see it gives off a really nice authentic look and i must say i really do recommend this if you are trying a project like this it does give off a great effect and i can't wait to paint that up to see what it comes out like but now as you can see i've cut out some little areas for the edging of our roof here as well so we just want to grab those glue them on as you can see i've cut them into a little triangle point as well to give them a nice uh if, you know peat roof look and it's going to really help add a little bit more uh, style and depth to the piece itself so just doing something nice and simple of that can really help change the whole look of a place so just being careful and placing them on and waiting for each side to dry so this took a little bit of time I had to place each side on and then let it dry each time so I didn't mess up the uh, roofing itself so it didn't dry in no awkward warped random way 
then now we've got that complete we're going to do another nice tedious job here and that is going to be placing roof tiles on the roof itself i didn't have anything for some sort of thatching which is what i really wanted to do i wanted to do some sort of like thatching but i couldn't come up with anything that was going to look nice enough i didn't have anything on hand that was going to do anything so what i did is i'm going to go with a nice tiled roof they're nice and traditional and easy and it's going to be great now one thing to note uh, while doing this is it took me a long long time to cut up these tiles <laughs> these are just out of some uh, card stock this here is uh, just from you know, you know your cereal box cardboard that, that that's the sort of stuff we want to look for for making these roof tiles here and you can see i cut them all out into little squares and then just cut off each of the edges of those squares to give them a sort of nice tiled roof look and it's just a matter of coming in and placing each of these on there to give that nice roofing tile effect starting from the bottom working our way up to the top to give that nice natural roof tiled look Okay, so now we've got that roofing done. I also want to mention one other little quick thing I did as well, and that was to the little base of this uh, house here. I just glued some little uh, bits of sand and gravel from my driveway here. But what we're going to be doing in this part is I'm going to be using some oil paint, and that is to be painting the wood. Now, basically, what it's going to do is it's going to stain the wood here. And what you want to do, especially when you're using oil paints, is you want to make sure you've got some white spirits to water it down with, because using uh, water on oil paints it's just not going to work you know, oil and water classically doesn't it's never going to work and it's especially not going to work on your paints so what you want to do is thin it down with your uh, white spirit as well as using that to clean the brush out as you go to don't forget to do that if you are using it on any uh, products here and as you can see instead of coming in with layers and layers of paint where I would have to prime it first then I would have to come in with the actual paint layer and then I'd have to try paint it to make it look like wood when we're just using wood itself and balsa wood is such great scale to work with hobbying and especially when you use some oil paints like this it immediately just stains it and you get to use that nice natural wood texture and it's just a matter of going around all of our wood trimmed areas and painting them up nicely now one thing I am doing too is being very careful to make sure that I don't get any of that oil paint accidentally onto our uh, sort of uh, area that we have in between our sections, our sort of like waddle and daub area there. I don't want any of it to accidentally stain over. Now naturally it's probably going to go in there a little bit, but I want to try and mitigate that as much as possible. So just being careful as you're painting up these edges like I am here, or if you're using oil paints in general, just be, be aware when you're getting it into something that can absorb something super fast, you can uh, really run the risk of getting some mistakes we don't want it to be. But the good thing about oil painting that I noticed too while doing this is it's actually nice and easy to clean up. You get a little bit of a uh, brush full of uh, white spirits, you can really clean up areas nicely so just remember that you want to practice your brush control at all times as well and there we are look at how much of a difference that makes and look how nice and textured that wood is we're just painting over it so now we're going to move on to our sort of waddle and daub area and i'm going to be using a yellow ochre to do this doing the exact same way you see here thinning it down with our white spirits and using it and you can see it immediately goes into all that tile grout pulls in there and it really sucks it up giving it a real strong color now it looked great white as it was but you could totally go with any color you want to do here you might want to go with blue or red whatever type of house you want to go for here i'm going for sort of a real aged house look i want to make it look like it's um white but it's being faded over time with dirt and grime and stuff like that and i'll show you what i'm going to do with that in the next step but just for now we want to come in and paint all of these areas in nicely being careful that we don't accidentally get any of that paint onto our wood area too because it will immediately stain it but remember you can always clean it up with white spirit so just remember to be careful as you're going along to save you that hassle okay so what we're going to do here is i've just grabbed a makeup sponge and i've got i've dipped it into some white spirits now what i'm going to be doing is i'm going to be using it like i said before when i was painting it up i want to give it that aged look and appearance and so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to dip it here into this little uh, container of white spirits and i'm going to use it to wipe away all of that oil paint they've got here and you can see i'm uh, giving it a good soaking overall so i can really get it into that sponge so i can use it nice and easily to wipe it up and it's pretty amazing i've never used oil paints uh, like this before and i've seen a lot of uh, 
YouTubers and crafters do it and I thought it looked super super fun and I definitely wanted to give it a try and I thought this is the perfect project to give this a try and as you can see the white spirits as soon as it touches that oil paint it immediately cleans it up now this here has also been sitting for uh, a day or two uh, when I did this uh, project I had to wait for it to be fully dry because oil paint takes a long time to dry and I wanted to make sure that so I gave it two days before I even started wiping it off just to make sure I didn't get any weirdness with it I don't know how like I said I've never done this technique before so I don't know how it's going to go so I wanted to make sure it's completely dry first and then if it didn't work out here with the uh, oil uh, white spirit sorry wiping it off I would still be left with a cool sort of uh, yellow ochre house effect anyway so but as you can see it's nicely rubbing it off and we get some areas on the uh, highest points with our waviness and our texture that we have here where it looks like we've got some uh, shadows and that the stuff as I'm wiping it is going to become less and less uh, yellow ochre and become more and more white so it's going to give that grimy appearance and I'm purposely avoiding it in the corners and stuff like that because that's where I want the griminess and that to naturally build up so now you can see what it came out like and man am I super happy with the result of this it really does look like an old sort of beaten up uh, old cottage that's been sitting there for a while and all that griminess is built up towards the edge uh, but now what I'm going to be doing is as you can see here I'm painting the roof now I did give this a coat in black paint beforehand and one thing I want to say to you uh, that I realized when I painted this which I didn't pay attention to is when I painted this up I should have actually primed it with black primer paint rather than just painting it in black paint I see you know in a lot of my craft projects I just paint them black first and start off with but what I ended up founding out especially with uh, going from a cheap craft store paint to miniature paint here and also since it's on uh, cardstock here is that some places I was actually pulling it all off and pulling it straight back to the cardboard itself whereas if I had it gone with a black primer I would have been fine and I would have had something for it to grip to uh, the paint I should have said would have gripped to and I think I just got a bad patch of uh, black paint there so it was starting to to rip off accidentally you can see it as I'm painting it up but um, just be aware of that if you're doing anything like this that sometimes you need to give things a proper prime instead of just a coat of cheap craft paint like I was using here I just want to try and shortcut a little bit because it's a lot of paint to use in this spot so I wanted to try and stop that as much as I could but turns out I shouldn't have been trying to skip steps and done it properly okay so now we've got that roof painted up you could totally leave it here but i want to add in a bit more uh, effects to the thing and so i'm going to be giving it a, a nice overall wash now one thing i noticed especially when i was doing this wash just like when i was painting up the roof tiles with our craft our miniature paint here that the base layer of all this is some black cheap black craft paint and it peeled up on me when the wash was in there because it's a nice and watery base paint and it got it all nice and wet again and pulled it up again so again don't um, be afraid to use black primer or something a little bit stronger maybe I just got a super bad patch of uh, this black craft paint but I did have to come up and uh, be careful as I was doing this and put a very light touch with the wash on there I used a little bit more wash than intended to I probably should have made some up myself with just using some brown craft paint but I was so uh, annoyed with the base layer of it before that I didn't want to switch back to any craft paint for the rest of the project and I just use miniature paint from here on out just because I knew it's way more reliable so then with that wash all dried up now I actually gave it two coats of wash here uh, I really wanted to make a really really grimy and uh, gross and disgusting and old looking so it was going to pop out these uh, highlights I'm doing a lot more so what I'm doing here is this is the original color I use for the roofing here which is a bluish gray color but totally up to you what if you are doing this whatever color you're making the roof here and I'm just going around and I'm picking out the edges of the tile and this is another nice tedious process but it's going to really help the effect in the end and I really wanted to make it so the edges of the tiles because it's where they naturally have a bit more wear and tear and it's where the sun would naturally hit so it's got these uh, nice areas as well as that it's going to be a nice eye-catching uh, piece from a distance especially that we've got some nice depth into these roof tiles so I know it takes a little bit of time but I think it's going to be worth it in the end it's just a matter of coming in and picking out all the bottom edges of these tiles and then one more little part that I uh, actually forgot to record is I made this little uh, 
bit on the front here for our door into our house and that was giving it some like metal banding as well as a little door handle so I just used cardstock again the same cardstock I used for the roof tiles and as well as that I had a little bead and I painted that up as well for the door handle and now I'm just coming in with an iron color that has rough iron uh, or duragar metal that gives it that nice iron look so I've got a nice strong iron wooden door and then with that we are complete with our project on turning our five dollar birdhouse into a tabletop wargaming slash rpg house so let's see how that came out with some final pictures and really take a good look at the thing overall okay so just to compare what we did this is what our piece looked like to start off with and this is what it looks like now and i must say i am super happy with how it came out it is going to be a great tabletop wargaming slash rpg gaming piece for our tabletops and you can see that when you place it in a scene you can really make it really fit in with your miniatures and it can turn into an awesome little thematic experience for your tabletop so i hope this video has been helpful for you guys and showing you what you can do with a little bit of time and some uh, edit can do sort of attitude for crafting something out of something that you wouldn't expect to turn into a tabletop piece and i must say i'm super happy with how it came out as well so i hope all you guys found this uh super entertaining and maybe helps you uh, gets you inspired and fired up to try this yourself with something that you have or just want to get into some crafting in general so with all that said guys i'd like to thank you all for watching and i can't wait to see you all in the next video